ان الحمد لله نحمده ونستعينه ونستغفره ونعوذ بالله من شرور انفسنا ومن سيئات اعمالنا من يهده الله فلا مضل له ومن يضلل فلا هادي له واشهد ان لا اله الا الله وحده لا شريك له واشهد ان محمدا عبده ورسوله يا ايها الذين امنوا اتقوا الله حق تقاته ولا تموتن الا وانتم مسلمون يا ايها الناس اتقوا ربكم الذي خلقكم من نفس واحده وخلق منها زوجها وبث منهما رجالا كثيرا ونساء واتقوا الله الذي تساءلون به والارحام ان الله كان عليكم رقيبا يا ايها الذين امنوا اتقوا الله وقولوا قولا سديدا يصلح لكم اعمالكم ويغفر لكم ذنوبكم ومن يطع الله ورسوله فقد فاز فوزا عظيما اما بعد the most valuable thing that the ummah that this ummah has or of the most valuable things that this ummah possesses who al insan it is mankind it is human beings it is people and the most valuable and precious time of the life of a human being is the stage of a shabab the stage or the time of youth the most valuable and precious time in the life of a human being is that time that Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala gives him of youthfulness of energy of enthusiasm naam Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala he says in surah ar-rum Allah khalaqakum min dha'f ثم جعل من بعد ضعف قوة ثم جعل من بعد قوة ضعفا وشيبة يخلق ما يشاء وهو العليم القدير. Allah عز وجل says in the fifty-fourth verse of Surah Al-Rum, Allah creates you from weakness. We come into this life weak. We come in this life not knowing anything. Allah takes us out of our wombs. We don't know nothing, not even our own name. We can't. Even eat if the food was put in front of us, we can't even bring the food to our mouth. Yani a stage of weakness when the children are little and they're babies. Weakness. All of us went to this stage. Then Allah says, "Thumma jaala min baadi dhaf in quwa." But then after you reach or after you pass this level of being a child, being weak, being small, you grow, and Allah Subhanahu wa Taala then makes you strong. This is the time of a shabab, the time of youthfulness. The ulama say al futuwa from 15 or 16 all the way up to 35 or 40 years old. This opportunity from Allah subhanahu wa taala of strength and energy and thinking quickly and also enthusiasm and not being beat down by this life, lowering your aspirations, giving up. No, the youth they have aspiration, they have energy, they want to build, they want to bring something new. This is all from Allah subhanahu wa taala's gift to mankind that He gives us. This opportunity, but then Allah Subhanahu wa Taala He says, "Thumma ba'da quwwatin dha'fa." But then after strength, after this energy, there will be weakness again. وَمَنْ نُعَمِّرْهُ نُنَكِّسُ فِي الْخَلْقِ أَفَلَا يَعْقِلُونَ Allah Azza wa Jalla says in Surah Al-Yasin, "And whoever we give life to, we give him years, he will begin to digress in his creation." This is the reality of Allah Subhanahu wa Taala. This is the reality of the life. So this stage of youth, this stage of shabab, this stage of strength, we have to take advantage of it as a ummah. And if you look to any group of people, and you want to know what is their condition, and you want to know what will be their future, the one place if you had to look at one place, all you have to look at is their youth. What are the youth doing with their time? What are the youth's goals? What are yani they building? What are the youth's aspirations? 
What is the character and the manners and the etiquette of the youth? How is the knowledge level of the youth? Where are the youth spending their time? If you look at this for any group of people, you will know where their ending will be and where their future will be and what their real, yani what, they, what their real, real value is. Not what they're doing right now. You judge a people upon their shabab, upon their youth. Because this is a gift from Allah Azza wa Jal and we're going to give us the proof from the sunnah of the Messenger of Allah Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam to show how this is a gift and how this is the most important of stages in our life. The Prophet Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam, he said, لا تزول قدم عبد يوم القيامة حتى يسأل عن أربع He said the two feet of the son of Adam, the day of judgment will not move an inch. Our two feet, the day of judgment, we stand before Allah Subhanahu Wa Ta'ala, your two feet will not move an inch the day of judgment until you're asked about four matters. You will not go anywhere until you're asked about four matters. Think about these questions right now because they're going to be asked to us the day of judgment. We will not move an inch left or right, forward or back before we ask these questions. What are they? He said, Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam, عَنْ عُمْرِهِ فِي مَا أَفْنَاهِ وَعَنْ شَبَابِهِ فِي مَا أَبْلَاهِ وَعَنْ مَالِهِ أَيْنَ أَكْتَسَبَهُ وَأَيْنَ أَنْفَقَهِ وَعَنْ عِلْمِهِ فِي مَا عَمَلَ فِيهِ He said, Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam, these four huge questions. He said the first of them on his life. How did he use his life? We'll be asked about that. This age Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala has given us, this time he has given us on this earth, all of us have an expiration date. How did you use your life? Think about it. Because you have to answer for it and I'll have to answer for the day of judgment. And then he said after that, sallallahu alayhi wa sallam, عن شبابه, on his youth, the time when he was young, the time when he had energy, the time when he had enthusiasm, the time he was strong, the time he can lift a lot and run a lot and work a lot and do a lot and read a lot, that time, you'll be asked about that as well. Why is the Prophet Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam here, right? Is the youth not a part of your, your whole life? The first thing we'll be asked about is our age, our life altogether. What, how did you use it? Then after that, the Prophet Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam specified youth. And how did you wear it out? Is this youth, right? And think about this. Is this youth not a part of your life? It's a part of your life, right? This is called, yani, taqsis ba'd al -aam. This is an Arabic language. It is specifying something after generalizing it. When you see in the Quran, the Sunnah, Allah or the Prophet Sallallahu specifying something after generalizing something, that points to what? To that thing that's specified? It points to the virtue of it. You understand the point here? تخصيص بعد العام يعني this is general your whole life you'll be asked about it then you'll be asked about a portion of your life which is the youth to show the fadl and the bounty and the excellence and the gift of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala that he gives us and the issues as we always come to the khutbah to solve problems we don't come here just to talk the issues that we have from both us as being leaders being fathers being mothers being leaders and also the youth is that we are not capitalizing upon our youth and we are treating our youth as if they are children for way too long and they're not coming into yani, their, 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 their ability, their true ability. We are not capitalizing on our youth's true ability, right? The youth take place or the portion of the youth in the ummah is 40% of our community. 40% of our community, we are not taking advantage and building them up and using them to push Islam forward and push our communities forward. Because we have developed this Western ideology of teenage years. Where do you find this in Islam? He's a teenager. She's a teenager. So this means, Ish hayatik. Live your life. You're still young. Where do we find this in the Quran, the Sunnah? We didn't find this. And this has made the child now, they come, they're a teenager, and then they go to school, and then they have to go to college, 22, 23, they come out and they see the real world. Now they are shocked by the reality of the real world. They've been covered by what our society is telling them, you're young, just do this, just do that, go to school. Alhamdulillah, go to school. Alhamdulillah, we're not speaking against that. We're saying that why is the child now, and I went through this my own self, my own self. Why is it now once you get out of college and you see the reality of life, now you're waking up and you're saying, SubhanAllah, what was I living in this whole time? 
It's like we've been covered and our eyes and our minds have been covered all the way until we are past puberty for how many years? Look into the sunnah of the Messenger of The Prophet he said, Rufi al qalam an thalath. He said, the pen, meaning the pen that is writing your deeds, everything you say, everything you do, good and bad, is lifted upon three people. Three groups of people. He said, an naim hatta yastaykiz. The person who's sleeping until he wakes up. Right? Al majnoon hatta yafiq. The person who lost his mind until he regains his mind. And the third one, which is the topic of our talk today, al-sagheer hatta yakbur or al-sagheer hatta yahtarim. He said, the young individual until they reach puberty. Now, what happens, my young brothers and sisters? Everything you do, everything you say is being written for you and you'll be taken into account for it. Why don't you act like that? Why are you still acting? I'm a teenager. It's okay. I can still live my life, do everything. I'm still a child. It's all good. It's not only your fault. It's also our fault as adults. It's also our fault as parents because we baby our children way too long. If Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala is now putting the takalif of the sharia, the responsibilities of the sharia is upon that young individual now. As soon as they reach puberty. What are the conditions of these ibadat to get your ibadat accepted? Salah, Hajj, huh? What are the conditions? al buluq that you reach puberty. So if Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala is taken to the account and making them responsible for the hugest, the most big responsibility, and that is yani, the responsibilities of the sharia. They're responsible now. Why us as adults now, we're still treating them like their children? And we're not preparing them to take on the responsibilities of this ummah and take them to the next level, to take our ummah to the next level and take our community to the next level. And like I said, by 24, they wake up and say, oh, I have to be an adult now. And it becomes hard for them. Some of them go to drugs, some of them go to alcohol, some of them run away from responsibilities. And now the men and the women who had these responsibilities on their back, they have to be old people past 60 and 70, still taking and holding these responsibilities when they should just be governing from the back. But they have to do, they have no choice. And you say, who's going to take this responsibility if I don't keep doing it? It's because we haven't prepared these young people. These people should be, these young people should be prepared to take these responsibilities and do it well. They're younger, they're more efficient, they have more knowledge, they're more at the time. They should be able to take what we started. They should be take your hard work and take it to the next level. And you see your work and the fruit of your work, you yani develop right before your eyes. So it's both ways. What the Prophet of Allah وسلم, said to us as parents. He said, Muru awladukum bis salah wa hum abana sabi'in. Wadribuhum alayhi wa hum abana ashrin. Wa farriku fil madajah. Farriku fil madajah. He says, Allah alayhi wa sallam, pay attention to this. He said, command, Muru, command your children with salah when they how old? Seven years old. Seven years old. First grade, first grade, my baby, my young son, my young girl, my baby, my love, my heart. Oh no, he's still small. La la, the Prophet said, command them with the salah when they're seven. Every single time the salah comes now, you command them to pray. Responsibility. What is this teaching them? Responsibility. And the biggest responsibility, the responsibility of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. And the Prophet he said, as salah umududdin. The salah is the pillar of the religion. So if they establish the prayer at seven and they're constantly reminded, 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 reminded with this huge responsibility, inshallah, all the other responsibilities will become easy. Huh? They become responsible people, right? So the deen is telling us to rabbi awladik, yani to nurture and cultivate your children upon responsibility from young. When is the salah obligatory upon them? Meaning that if they don't do it, now they get taken into account when they reach puberty. Now a child may reach puberty 13, 14 years old. From seven, the deen is saying, command them with the salah. What is this doing? Preparation. Now if they go and you didn't do this, right? You didn't follow this command of the Prophet They're 14. You say, stop making salah. He going to stop praying? Huh? She going to stop praying at, at 14, 15? And do you never command them with the salah all these years? Very difficult. And just like that, all the responsibilities of this life. So what we're supposed to be doing as parents, young people should be taking on and understanding that they are now 
going through puberty and they are counted as adults and young and the parents should be nurturing them and cultivating them upon responsibility of this deen and this dunya. They should be having things that they do regularly. They should be having yani, things that are their assignments that they do when they finish. Right? And you take them to account as a parent, whatever it may be, from the deen and the dunya. So now they get older, they're not on your back until you're 60 years old. You got 30 year old children still like babies. 25, 30 year olds still like babies. We don't find this in the Quran and the Sunnah. We go back to the early generations. When we go back to the Quran, look what the Quran has told us Ibrahim alayhi salam, Abu al Anbiya, the father of the prophets. What was he doing when he was, when he was a teenager? Huh? Changing his whole community. Allahu Akbar. He's a teenager changing his whole community. Fatan. They قالوا من فعل هذا بآلهتنا إنه لمن الظالمين Who is the one who did this to our gods? When Ibrahim broke their idols, destroyed their idols. They said من من فعل هذا Who did this? Huh? قالوا سمعنا فتى يذكرهم يقال له إبراهيم. They said they knew him already. They knew what he was about. They said we heard a فتى a young person, a young man. The ulama say he was 16 years old when he did this. Subhanallah. The ulama of tafsir say Ibrahim alayhi salam when he broke these idols and challenged his whole society upon their falsehood was only 16 years old. We heard a young man mentioning our idols. They say his name is Ibrahim. He became known for that. Wa Ismail, look at Ismail. His son Ismail. Qalu, ya bunay. He said, Oh my dear son, I have saw in the dream that I am to slaughter you. What did he say? Huh? This is when Ismail just became old enough to start moving around with his father. He's very young here. He became just old enough when he's able to help his father with the daily errands and go out with him and help him with certain things. Allah sends the, sends the dream to, the, to Ibrahim السلام, to slaughter him. Look at the return. Look what Ismail says back to him. قَالَ يَا أَبَتِي إِفْعَلْ مَا تُؤْمَرْ سَتَجِدُنِي إِنْ شَاءَ اللَّهُ مِنَ الصَّابِرِينَ He said, my father, my dear father, do what you've been commanded. You will find me of the patient ones. So look at that. Young person, he's still a child. Just reached the, the age to be able to help his father. Allah told you to do that? Look at the sincerity of the shabab. They have sincerity. They have, they have sincerity sometimes even more than us. Allah said it, we do it. The Prophet said it, that we have to follow it. You find that in the youth when they, when they have been cultivated upon this deen. The corruption of the dunya has not entered their heart like it's entered our hearts. The fear of the powers that be has not entered their heart like it's entered our hearts. You find them more sincere and less fearful of, of consequences. That's why they have to be nurtured from the elders have to nurture them with their wisdom from behind and push them with their wisdom and allow them with their energy and sincerity to push the ummah forth. I'm not saying leave them alone to go do whatever they want. They need to be with the elders. But we have to push them, we have to cultivate them and we have to give them that opportunity. بسم الله الرحمن الرحيم الحمد لله رب العالمين والصلاة والسلام على أشرف الأنبياء وخاتم المرسلين نبينا محمد وعلى آله وصحبه أجمعين ما بعد If we look into the sunnah of the messenger of Allah صلى الله عليه وسلم and we find the stories of the greatest men to walk the earth after the prophets and messengers the sahaba and how the Prophet Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam utilized them. The Prophet Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam utilized the companions. He found what their virtues were and he put them to work Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam. And that is a great characteristic of a leader. A leader, he doesn't necessarily have all the skill set. And, and we're not speaking about the Prophet Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam, we're speaking generally. A leader doesn't necessarily 
have all the skill set or all the knowledge or the ability to do everything, but his the number the thing that is talent leaders is they're able to see talent and they're able to motivate that talent and push it and give it energy and enthusiasm to go do what they are able to do. Now, so we find this in the Sunnah of the Messenger of Allah وسلم. Look at the age of the Prophet وسلم, when he came into prophethood. How old was he? 40 years old. 40 years old. How old was Abu Bakr as Siddiq, radiallahu anhu, the best of the Ummah after the Prophet sallallahu alayhi wa sallam when he became a Muslim? 37 years old. And look where he took off. 37 years old. Look at uh, Umar ibn al-Khattab, radiallahu anhu. When he became a Muslim, how old was he? And he was already strong. And he was already known between the Muslimin and the Kuffar and the Mushrikeen. Already known. He was 31 years old. Wahid wa thalathun, 31 years old. Ali ibn Abi Talib, and this is the Khulafa al-Rashidun. Ali ibn Talib, when he became a Muslim, he is known as the youngest person to accept Islam. He was only 10 years old when he became a Muslim. And look where they went, and look where they took off. The Prophet sallallahu alayhi wa sallam, he saw yani Mus'ab ibn Umair, someone who left the dunya, someone who left the dunya and gave his heart to Islam and learned the religion. Before the Prophet sallallahu alayhi wa sallam went to Medina, he sent Mus'ab ibn Umair as the first ambassador of Islam, young man. He sent Mus'ab ibn Umair to Al-Medina and he taught them the deen and he taught them the Quran and the meanings of the Quran and he called them to Islam and he called them to La ilaha illallah. Young man, the first ambassador of Islam was Mus'ab ibn Umair, he sent to Al-Medina. And before the Prophet sallallahu alayhi wa sallam get there, got there, they already came into Islam. Is that not right? First ambassador. Mu'adh ibn Jabal, when he became a Muslim, he was only 18 years old. And he was known as A'lam al-Ummah bil halal wal haram. He was known as the most knowledgeable of the Ummah with halal and haram. And the Prophet sallallahu alayhi wa sallam sent, as many of us know, he sent him to Al-Yemen. 20 something years old, sent him to Al-Yemen. Look at Yemen today, all Muslim. He sent Mu'adh ibn Jabal to Yemen to call them to Islam. And to teach them the religion. Famous, famous hadith of the Prophet said to Mu'adh ibn Jabal. Usama ibn Zayd. Usama ibn Zayd, one of the beloved of the Messenger of Allah sallallahu alayhi wa sallam. When the Prophet said to was old in age and he was gathering the Muslims to fight Rome, Rome, this great, great empire of Rome. Who did he put as the commander over the Muslims with an army that had in Abu Bakr and Umar radiallahu anhu? Who did he put as the Qa'id, as the Amir, as the leader? Usama ibn Zayd. How old was Usama ibn Zayd? 18 years old. These are our forefathers. These are our forefathers, 18 years old. And from scholarship as well, Zayd ibn Thabit. When the Prophet وسلم, entered Al Medina, he was 11 years old. He was very smart and very, very intelligent. And when he would hear something, he would memorize it. The Prophet وسلم, every time revelation will come to him, he will say, Zayd, write it down. He became the scribe and the writer of the revelation for the Prophet وسلم, as a teenager. Allahu Akbar. And when he was 15 years old, the Prophet وسلم, gave him a task to learn the language of the Jews. He said, I do not trust them when they write to me. And I do not trust that when I write to them, it is told to them what I'm writing. So he said, Zayd, learn the language of the Yehud. He said, فَتَعَلَمْتُهَا I learned their language. وَحَذَكْتُهَا And I was fluent in it in 15 days, in half a month. Half a month, I learned the language of the Yehud. And every time they wrote to him, I read it for him. And every time he wrote to them, I was the one to write it. Allahu Akbar. Allahu Akbar. These are the companions. These are the early generation of the Muslims. This is how the Prophet Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam would see talent. And he used talent. And look how far they went. Look how far they went with the Prophet, with Abu Bakr radiallahu anhu, and with Umar ibn Khattab. Look how far they went. Right? The last thing I say here, in order for this thing to work, right, it needs two things. And it's found in the hadith of the Messenger sallallahu alayhi wa sallam. He said, لَيْسَ مِنَّا مَنْ لَمْ يَرْحَمْ صَغِيرَنَا وَيُوَقِّرْ كَبِيرَنَا Look at this hadith, right? He said, the person who does not have mercy or show mercy to the young people is not from us. And the young person who does not show high respect to the elders is also not from us. You see this point right here? We're speaking about the Shabab and using the Shabab and giving them responsibility and building them up for us to have the Ummah go forth. And that's the Sunnah of the Messenger 
But we're saying this will not go, it will not work if you just leave the Shabbat to go wild. And they forget the elders. And they say, forget what you have going on. We do our own thing. No, we're not saying that. The Prophet Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam will oversee these young men. Who oversee these Sahaba. The, the big of the Sahaba will oversee these young men. Naam, they still had their position. And they still had their high respect and, and, and loftiness with the community. So the point I'm trying to say is, how are we going to do this? Oh, firstly, the elders have to have mercy and give opportunity to the youth. For the sake of Allah. For the sake of pushing the ummah forth. Wallahi tallahi billahi. We stand on the member of the Messenger of Allah to say the truth, right or wrong. You need to do that. Wallahi, all of us are going to die. Everyone else will meet the grave. We need to make establishment for the future. And the future is the youth. You have to invest in them. But at the same time, the youth have to have high respect, high honor, and give these men who dedicated their life and their time and their energy and their wealth and their health for the sake of Islam. You give them their position. You give them their position. You don't disregard them and throw them away. You guys are old. No, that's not from Islam. So we say here, this is the combination for success. Mercy to the youth, giving them opportunities, but also leading, right? And then the youth coming, what? Giving them high respect and honor them and giving them position and getting their wisdom as well. The youth, they have the energy, they have the enthusiasm, but they may lack what? The wisdom and the experience of the elders. So they may make a lot of mistakes. With the wisdom and the experience of the elders, with the energy and the enthusiasm of the youth, you find what? Great things happen. Right? For inshallah, this khutbah was motivation for us as this community here and at large here in America, being 1% of this country. 1% of this country. And we have to use all of our resources. And all of our goal has to be to push Islam. And as we mentioned in the beginning of the khutbah, the greatest resource we have is human beings, is people. And the greatest gift Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala has given us from our lives is this age of youthfulness. Ya muqallib al-qulub, thabbit qulubana ala deenik. Ya musarraf al-qulub, sarraf qulubana ala ta'atik. ربنا لا تزغ قلوبنا بعد إذ حديتنا وهب لنا من لدنك رحمة إنك أنت الوهاب رب اغفر وارحم وتخير الرحيمين سبحان ربك رب العزة عما يصفون وسلام على المرسلين والحمد لله رب العالمين قوموا لله قانتين وأقيموا الصلاة